The Lives of Saints by Lee Bardugo Sanct Ilya in Chains There was a gifted healer and inventor who lived on the outskirts of a farming village. Ilya was a recluse, happiest to remain in his workshop and keep to himself, but he could be counted on for a tonic or help with a plow when asked. He was only seen in the village when trading his cures or the pelts of animals he had trapped for food. On these rare occasions, he was usually scribbling away frantically in an old leather book. Once a man asked him, Ilya, what great wonders are you imagining in those pages? But Ilya only scowled and continued down the road, eager to return to his experiments. What he hoped to accomplish in his workshop was a mystery, and many suspected that Ilya had long since passed from ambition to madness. Then one day, deep in his books and potions, Ilya heard screaming from the fields beyond his home. He followed the terrible sound and found a farmer and his wife wailing over the body of their young son. The child had been nearly cut in half by a plow blade and his blood had soaked into the soil, making a red halo around his body. His eyes were gray and glassy, no breath stirred beneath his chest. No one could recover from such a wound. But Ilya knelt and, head bent, placed his hands upon what should have been a corpse. To the shock of all who stood watching, the wounds seemed to knit together. Moments later, the boy's eyes cleared. He blinked. His chest began to rise and fall, in hitches and gasps at first, and then in steady rhythm. The boy sat up and laughed and called to his mother and father to embrace him. But the child's parents did not go to him. They had seen the extent of his injury. They had seen the life leave his body. Whatever thing smiled and held its arms out to them was not their son. The villagers who had come running when they heard the mother's cries now stared at this child who should not breathe and the man who had somehow drawn air back into his lungs. It was not natural to make life from death. And they wondered, where had Ilya been when their wives and children and loved ones had suffered? Where was this great healer when Yana's baby was born blue and cold? Or when the firepox had carried off half the village only a few years past? Why had he not appeared when Baba Lira wasted away to nothing, growing weaker with each passing day and praying for death that didn't come until she was little more than a heap of sticks rubbing together her prayer beads? They seized Ilya and clapped him in heavy chains, a collar for his neck and fetters for his wrists and ankles. They dragged him to the bridge that overlooked the river where the water foamed white around the jagged rocks, and they cast Ilya over the side. It is said his corpse emerged on a sandbank many miles south, perfectly preserved and guarded by a white stag, who stood vigil over the body for three full months. The child Ilya had dragged back from the next world wandered the village, asking for his mother and father, begging for a place to sleep. Every door was closed to him, and so he was left to the woods, where he can still be heard crying. Sanct Ilya is the patron saint of unlikely cures.